In this session, we're going to talk about uh, the basics of digital systems and information. So let's start. Uh, this is the overview of the chapter that we will discuss in this session. So we will briefly talk about the digital systems, computers and uh, such devices and the how do we represent information uh, in those uh, systems and we will take a look at the number systems this will be dominantly about binary octal and hexadecimal number systems of course the other number systems are also important but we will introduce this and then we will take a look at the arithmetic operations base conversions decimal codes particularly binary code decimal and the alphanumeric codes and parity bit and gray coding. So what is a digital system? Briefly, it takes a set of discrete inputs and transforms them or uh, creates uh, relevant discrete outputs with respect to those uh, discrete inputs. And this is called the discrete information pro processing system that's the idea if it has a system state as well like uh, holding the state or memory of the system like we remember what we did our, in our in our past or something then it it also holds the system state uh, as well that's the idea about the uh, basics of digital systems we briefly have two types of digital systems where if you don't have a, a system state like this here it is called a combinational logic system we will discuss these first where your output is a direction a direct uh, uh, function of your input but if you have state and uh, th those states can either be updated at discrete times Okay, uh, at given time period so this is called a synchronous sequential system or your state can be updated at any time so it doesn't depend on any discrete time uh, intervals so it is called an asynchronous sequential system this time so in that sense uh, your state can be a, a, a function of state and input as you see here in this uh, drawing as well see your system state will uh, depend on your uh, inputs and uh, current state as well uh, okay this one and your output will be dependent on your current state or both your current state and input as well so in this sense uh, your output can be dependent on only the system state that's possible or it can be both dependent on the inputs and system state as well in this sense both are possible we will see this in the next chapters okay now let's take a look at this digital basic digital system example here you see a digital counter which is also called an odometer like uh, how many uh, miles are traveled uh, in your car or something like this it briefly has a count tap uh, trigger and also a reset signal here your inputs are count up and reset that's what, what you have at all and your output is the visual display here and the state is the value of stored digits how many miles or kilometers you traveled so far this is what you, so when you look take a look at this do you think is it a synchronous or asynchronous system just think about it pause the video and think about it here you need to think does this system gets updated at regular time intervals or they get updated at any time dependent on other factors like this so you need to think about this 
And let's take a look at the other example where you have a basic computer here which has a central processing unit uh, uh, consisting its control unit and da data path and memory and Im input output devices. Your inputs can be okay, your microphone, your mouse, whatever, and your outputs will be your screen, your speakers, whatever. Okay, what well, about uh, the system? So, do you think it is synchronous or asynchronous? Just pause the video and think about it. While thinking, again, consider the same thing. Does this system get updated at regular time intervals, these times, or it can get updated at any time? So, that's the idea about uh, synchronous and asynchronous systems. So, uh, embedded systems, by definition, are considered as where the systems where computers are integral parts of other products. So we're talking about a machinery or electronic device or something. It also has a computer as a component here. Some examples of embedded computers are microcomputers, microcontrollers, digital signal processors. Okay, your uh, uh, home equipment or something anything okay uh, you can expand the examples with anything uh, any device uh, used uh, nowadays because no matter what uh, so we somehow have uh, some kind of computers embedded within them especially today and of course and tomorrow as well like your cell phones, automobiles, video games, copiers, dishwashers, whatever, okay? You have so many examples in this sense. Here, for these digital systems, you somehow need to represent information here uh, by the signals. And the information variables are represented by physical quantities here. For the digital systems, the variables take on discrete values dominantly zero and one in this two level logic uh, binary values are the most prevalent values in such systems they are represented by this is the most common one digit digits zero and one or like false and true or low or high signals okay they correspond uh, they, they all have the same meaning or the words on and off okay that's the idea and the binary values are represented by values or ranges of values of physical quantities what do we mean by this let's take a look at this so here you have the time ticking here it's like a heartbeat or clock signal and that here you see an analog signal here, which is continuous in value. See, it is continuous. And also in time as well, okay? It's, uh, it's a real or analog signal. Here, uh, these two are digital signal examples, which is, th th the first one is asynchronous one. You remember, just from our previous slides, asynchronous systems, it is discrete in value. You see, there is strong difference between zero and one here and they are strict okay they're, they're they're the same but it is continuous in time it can be updated or changed at any given time and here you see the synchronous signal here where the values are fixed again discrete and it is also updated at discrete times as well discrete time intervals as well you see these are equal and they're updated at equal time intervals now it means that we're talking about a synchronous system here. Now let's take a look at a signal example here as, the, uh, as a physical quantity. Okay, we take voltage as an example here. And here you see a real signal, which is uh, your time dependent voltage signal. Okay, this is like a clock pulse or something like this, What you can observe in the lab by using probes and checking out your circuit you can uh, i mean uh, see the signal on your scope uh, but however this is the, the the below one is the binary model of this uh, time dependent <coughs> voltage here 
And of course, how can I understand whether I am in one or zero region? Okay, let's say that this is the middle value. Okay, when will I consider that I will be uh, generating or reading true signal or zero signal? Now, for this sense, you, you have some thresholds. Here you see a uh, example voltage range here on the left side where okay this one is your high signal and this one is your low signal and this is your indefinite value what is between them so you don't process them okay but for example if you if you get uh, 0.95 volts for example you will consider this as high voltage in the other example on the right uh, now the threshold region is a bit wider as you see here from 0.6 to 1 is your high signal or true signal and from 0 to 0 0.4 will be your false signal region that's the idea and we can you can uh, assume or you can develop your, your system in a, either way or in uh, in left model or right model it depends on your design okay what, what makes it interesting for us for example we can consider that the system on the left hand side is, for example, uh, a bit uh, more reliable, but uh, if you have something in between, for example, like 0.7 volts or something, this system will ask you to resend the data, for example. Okay, there, there should be an error in the signal uh, because it is not true or it is not false. So please send me that signal again, right? Okay, it, it, it is a reliable system, but maybe a bit more demanding, okay? It, it wants the perfect signal. However, uh, the one on the right-hand side will process the signal as uh, high or true and keep on working. Okay, maybe it works a bit more Mm, faster or it requires uh, less uh, resend of data or something but in the end at the end of the day it would be a less reliable system than the left one because it would be more prone to errors right suppose that there is a noise in your signal and uh, it has be it can be easily interpreted as uh, high signal for example suppose that your your signal value is 0.3 for example but there was a noise and it can be switched to 0.7 and you will get the signal as uh, understand or process the signal as a high signal in fact it should be a low signal that's the idea uh, of uh, defining threshold regions uh, for your systems um, what are other pro physical quantities other than vo voltage for representing 0 and 1? For example, in the uh, CPU, central processing units of uh, computers, we use voltage for this purpose. But for the disks, for example, uh, hard disks, magnetic field direction, for example, can be used and uh, they are used. And for the compact disk, okay, we don't have them anymore, but we were using surface pits and light for this purpose uh, for separating zero from one and in dynamic rams for example read, uh, re, uh, random access memories here we have electrical charges okay positive or negative charges for representing zero and one this is some alternative ways for uh, displaying uh, binary values in our systems now, in the number systems, we represent them as uh, with radix approach, like uh, we're talking about positional number systems here, where you have the radix point right here, and this will be your first digit or least significant digit, and up to most significant uh, digit here, you see. Okay, it is in the same in decimal numbers as well, like uh, if you have uh, $10.75 for example so okay this is the least significant digit than the other one whatever okay it goes this way and this way okay this is the amount of uh, uh, 
money you have or that's how we represent information here and you go this way for the fraction part so the string of digits represent the power series here okay this is the calculation for the magnitude for the integer portion here okay you have your uh, digit value here and its coefficient multiplied by it here you see it is okay if you have here for example uh, radix r as r as uh, 2 for example what you have here will be 2 to the power 0 2 to the power 1 2 to the power 2 as coefficients here and again for the fraction part it works exactly the same okay you have your digit value here and this is the coefficient of uh, or value of uh, that digit so it's 2 to the power minus 1 and 2 to the power minus 2 and whatever okay you see this is the definition of uh, representation of uh, positional number systems you can see them right here and let's take a look at some uh, number system examples this is the general one that we discussed a few moments before and its powers and this is the decimal one that we're pretty familiar with we use it in daily life and this is the one that we should be pretty familiar with because it is used in our computer systems or uh, uh, compu computing devices that's the idea and do we need to memorize them uh, no uh, you don't have to but uh, it happens eventually i mean uh, what is 2 to the power 5 for example it's 32 but uh, do i have to memorize this no but if you use it a lot you will eventually memorize it and it would be pretty efficient for you in the exams to memorize okay i um, i also this works for the fraction part as well memorizing i think i remember these ones um, i eventually memorized them i didn't put effort on it by using them but uh, of course i cannot uh, remember these anyhow and there are some special powers of two here where two to the power 10 is denoted by kilo like you remember from uh, RAM sizes, maybe kilobytes of memory, megabytes of memory, gigabytes of memory, or terabytes of hard disk, for example, maybe you remember. Okay, 2 to the power 20 is uh, mega, it is denoted by capital M, and 2 to the power 30 is denoted by giga, and it's den denoted by G, capital G, and 2 to the power 40 is tera, and it is denoted by capital t but be careful here you see here for example for kilo is not like the kilo in metric system for example like kilograms for example one kilogram means a thousand grams right here and this is for weight for example or one kilometers corresponds to a thousand meters but in the computer domain or binary domain one kilobyte for example or one kilobit means 124 bits okay We're to this is the distinction so that's why you see some differences between what we understand as kilo from other uh, metric systems for weight or something like this it's a bit different but roughly the idea is similar now we will take a look at the arithmetic operations that can be done with the binary arithmetic okay wh what can we do, do with this binary arithmetic single bit addition with carry we will see this multiple bit addition single bit subtraction with barrow multiple bit subtraction multiplication and bcd or uh, binary coded decimal uh, addition here that's the idea so uh, when we take a look at the uh, single bit addition with carry uh, when we're given two binary digits like this like these ones what happens is all the combinations okay you add them up and this is your sum this one and this would be your carry here carry out it's pretty similar to decimal system in fact you add these up write the amount here and this is your input carry that's it see 
So this is your input carry part. And these are your two numbers. And this is your sum. And this is your output carry. That's the idea. So this is pretty straightforward for no carry in. This one. See? It's pretty straightforward. For the if you have a carry input of one here, then you need to add all of them. Okay, that's the idea. When you add three of them together, you will end up with three, right? But it's not possible uh, in two. So you subtract the base, it will be one, and you send an output carry here, okay? You add all of these and it will correspond to two, and, but it's not represented in, because we only have zero and one for representation in binary uh, form. So we will just put here zero and you will put an output carry here. So in this sense, this one is the same as this one. And for this one, okay, one is directly one. It's possible to represent this and zero will be your output carry. So if you make a multiple bit binary addition, let's see how it goes. It's pretty straightforward. In fact, let's start with the, uh, okay, let's start with this one on the left side. So, okay. 0 plus 1 is plus 0, of course, you're carrying here. It's 1. Do I have any output carry here? No. So it's 0. And you will have here 0. And do, do I produce any output carry here in this digit? No. So it would be 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. And again, ch I check whether I produce an output carry or not. No. So 1. No output carry. Okay one and no output carry here and this would be my result that's the idea okay so now let's do the other one and can i change the color here yes now uh my input carry is zero and I'm, I'm trying to add these two uh, numbers, uh, which are Ogand and Adam. Zero plus one is one. Do I have any output carry? No, zero. One plus one is, be careful, one plus one, I cannot represent it either with zero and one, right? So I need to subtract two here. Uh, subtract the base here, that's the idea. So I will have zero here, but now, I produce an output carry to my neighbor. Now my neighbor has to add all of these three numbers, right? It would be what? One plus one plus one is three. So in the base two system, it will correspond to one, right? So it will be uh, one. And your output carry will be one as well. And when you have this, you uh, send this to your neighbor here as input carry. And when you, it is one, see, one plus zero plus zero is one, and it produces no output carry. And one plus one is what? Remember, it is zero, and it will produce an output carry here. That's the idea, and your output carry will go right here as addition, and your result will be this number, okay? That's the idea. Uh, with multiple bit binary addition or that's how we do uh, the binary addition in this sense. And let's take a look at single bit binary subtraction with barrel. It is exactly the same as what we, what we do in decimal system. It's even easier than it because you only have zero or one here, nothing else. So, but you just need to be familiar with it. Let's do them step one by one so you get used to. Uh, I'm trying to subtract zero from zero, it's zero. Okay, it's pretty straightforward, zero. I'm trying to subtract zero, uh, one from zero here. It's not possible, see? I cannot subtract one from zero here. So I get a battle from my neighbor, okay? Now I have two in my pocket, right? Here, I have two in my pocket. Two minus one is one. But I, my, now I send a debt I, uh, I, I apply a debt to my neighbor here and the result is this one. So it, it, it would be a debt to my neighbor. Okay, one mi uh, zero minus one is directly one. No debt for my neighbor. 
1 minus 1 is 0 and no depth for my neighbor. Okay, this is uh, the examples without barrow, barrowing uh, for our digits. What if we have a barrow in our, uh, so we need to take, it means that we are in depth. We need to pay our debt first, okay? Consider that this one has to pay its debt. Uh, let's start with the left-hand side, okay? Let's take a look at this. Now, this one, normally, if I didn't have any debt here, there, that it would be pretty straightforward like a bow. But this digit has to pay its debt first. That's the idea. Pay your debt first, but I don't have any money, okay? I need to borrow from my neighbor. I take it from my neighbor and I have two now in my pocket. Okay, do I have any? I mean, does my neighbor have any? No, it's not your problem. Don't think about it. Just borrow from your neighbor, okay? That's how it works. Now you have two in your pocket. First, pay your debt and you will have one in your pocket. One minus zero is one and you assign a debt to your neighbor. That's how it works. Now let's take a look at the next one. Okay. I'm trying to subtract one from zero here. It's po is it possible? No. I need to take debt. And I, uh, okay, I take debt from my neighbor and this one becomes two now. And two minus one, I need to pay my debt first because I had a debt before. It will be one. Then I subtract one from one, it would be zero here, but I assign a debt to my neighbor. That's the idea. Okay, I have one in my pocket. I need to pay one debt, pay it first. Zero minus zero is zero. No debt is assigned to my neighbor. And I have one in my pocket. Pay your debt first. I have zero in my pocket and I need to subtract one from here, but it's impossible because I have zero in my pocket. Take two from your neighbor. Two minus one is one and your neighbor is in debt as well. Okay, that's it about single bit binary subtraction with barrow. It is the same as doing subtraction in decimal form, right? Okay, you're trying to subtract, uh, I mean, uh, uh, six from four, for example, what you do, you take a debt from your neighbor, like, and it becomes 14, right? And then you subtract the six, then it would be your eight, and you uh, assign a debt to your neighbor, right? Okay, that's the idea. And your neighbor has to pay its debt first, so it would be zero, and the result will be uh, eight. That's the idea, and you, you don't put zero here, and the uh, and this is how we do subtraction in decimal system. In you, do, you do it easily and uh, you will do it easily in binary system as well. Now, let's take a look at this. Let's solve the example on the left hand side first. Just do what I told you in the previous slide. Just pay your debt first, okay? Zero minus one and I don't have any debt at all. So, it's zero. And do I produce any debt for my neighbor here, borrow for my neighbor here? No. So that's the idea. Okay, one minus one is zero. Do I produce any debt from my neighbor? No. One minus zero is one. Do I produce any debt for my neighbor? No. Okay, zero. Do I produce? No. And one minus one is Zero. And do I produce any debt for my neighbor? No. And your answer is this. That's it. So what about the next one or the, the one on the right hand side? I'm trying to subtract one from zero. Is it possible? No. Take a debt from your neighbor and this becomes two. Two minus one is one. And this one has a debt now to pay. Pay your debt first. And this one becomes zero. Right? And then zero minus one, is it possible? No. Get a debt from your neighbor and it becomes what? Two. Two minus one is, look at this, two minus one is one, but this one has a debt as well now. Okay, that's the idea. So pay your debt first. These are gone. And zero minus zero is zero. Do, do I produce a debt from my neighbor here? Debt for my neighbor? No. Borrow for my neighbor? No. So it's zero. 
0 and do I produce a depth? No, and 1 minus 0, 1 minus 1 is 0 as well. And I, my output barrel is, uh, barrel out is also 0 as well. And your uh, resultant uh, or final uh, difference is this one. This is how we do multiple bit binary subtraction. Now let's take a look at binary multiplication. It's pretty straightforward and it's the same as what we do in, uh, I mean, decimal multiplication. That's it. And it's even easier. Look at this. Now, you write this one here, okay, exactly this one because it can either be there or not, okay? It, it's one and it's there then shift them by one digit here and write zero here because it's multiplied by zero here all of them then one multiplied by one here and you have your this uh, stair scheme as you have in your uh, decimal number system that's it when you have this when you have this all you need to do is binary addition right okay one 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 be careful one plus one is zero and you have an output carry here so here you have one and here you have one see so what you have here looks like this it's wonderful so how we that's how we calculate the product and uh, four base conversions it is useful to remember all of these powers of two uh, i mean uh, how to convert between the bases like from decimal to uh, binary system binary to decimal system do we need to memorize them again no no need to memorize them but eventually you will remember them like i do now I think I remember them up to here, I guess. Yes, up to here, I remember them. Anything above them? Okay, I have a rough idea, but I don't remember them exactly. But uh, this is how I... What, what is the advantage of remembering them? It saves you time and... Uh, I mean exams and uh, when you when you don't have a calculator or something like this it can be helpful so how do we convert a binary number to decimal number for example we're trying to convert this number uh, this number to uh, which is in binary form to a decimal number it's easy we uh, just uh, learned the positional number systems here, right? Look at this, how beautiful it is. You remember? Like, uh, what was the number? Uh, and we will use this here. Uh, let me just uh, remember the number here. 11010. 11010. Okay, 11010. 11010. Great. One one zero one zero we are located in this section of the number there is no fraction part here so we will use this part for calculation so it will be i'm just doing it okay uh, zero my times two to the power zero plus now i do this for one 1 times 2 to the power 1 plus for this one 0 times 2 to the power 2 and for this one 1 times 2 to the power 3 and for this one finally plus 1 times oops not good 1 times 2 to the power 4 right that's it and now i just write their numbers okay this one is zero and this one is uh, zero as well directly zero and how about the other ones this one is your 16 
Okay, that's why I told you it's it's nice to remember uh, remember them or memorize. Them. Don't memorize. Okay, it's nice to remember them. Two to the power four is sixteen. I write can I can write this directly here because I remember. Okay, I'm, uh, that's what I want you to remember as well. That's the idea. So what you have here is sixteen plus, and this one is your uh, eight. And this one is your 2. So the result is what? 26. Voila. So and here you put your 26 here as your result, right? 26 in, of course, in decimal form or 10 base is your answer. That's it. And if you want to convert a decimal number to binary form, uh, now there are two methods for this. Okay, in the first method, we subtract the largest possible power of 2 that gives a positive remainder and record that power. Then we repeat this, then we, then we subtract this number from that number and repeat this process until we reach to zero here in the end. That's the idea. I need to show this to you in a separate uh, board, but please remember that it is again useful to remember or get used to these numbers to have comfort while doing this okay let's now take a do this for this number okay we're trying to convert this number to base two right okay now what is the largest possible number can be fit here i can directly say that it is two to the power nine because i remember i remember that this is my 512 but if I want more, 2 to the power 10, for example, it will be 1024, which will not fit here, you see. So, not that one, but I will use 2 to the power 4. Okay, now, do we have 2 to the power 9 in it? Yes. So, I put a... Okay, I subtract it from uh, my original number, and the result is, and I put a 1 here because there was a number that could be fit in here. Okay, that's the idea. Now I put this number here as my remainder. Okay. My next step, next iteration here. Now, what is the largest power of 2 that could be fit here? I mean, uh, I'm checking this. Now, can I fit 2 to the power 9 here? Uh, I'm sorry, 2 to the power 8 here, which is what? 256, right? No. So, I put a 0 here since I couldn't fit it here. And then... Iterate once again. Can I put 2 to the power 7 here? Which is what? Your basic 128, right? 128 here. No, I couldn't fit it again. And then iterate more. 2 to the power 6, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Just subtract it and you will get... 49, but this time put a 1 here, right? Because you succeeded in fitting it in. And then, now be careful. Just put this remaining number here for the next step. Okay, it would be your 49. Can I put, drop it once? Can I uh, fit uh, 32 within here? Yes, it's possible. Subtract it and you will end up with 17, but you managed to fit it in, so you put a 1 here. Okay, now you have your 
17 here. Can I put 2 to the power 4 in this? Yes! Keep on doing it. Don't stop. Yes, you have your 1 here. And you have your 16 here. Can I put 2 to the power? Oops! Be careful. I made a mistake here, right? I made a mistake here. What was it? Minus 16 is 1. Okay? 17 minus 16 is 1. So you need to put this 1 here. Be careful. You always work with the remainder. Now 2 to the power 3. Can I fit it here? It's possible? No. Okay. Drop 1. 1, 2 to the power 2 here. Can I fit it here? No. And, and 1, 2 to the power 1. Can I fit it here? No. I think these ones are, okay, not equal signs because it, 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 may, be, it may confuse you. These so are just arrows. Okay. And finally, finally, 1, 2 to the power 0. Can I fit this? Yes, so I, uh, 1 minus 1 is what? 0. And since you, you were able to fit it, so it will be your 1. And when you have 0 here, this, let's say, method has finishes. So it's impossible to put anything else because there will be all zeros, right? Right away. So then you write this in this order. Let me show you. Look at this. In this order, you write them. Okay. In this order, you write those numbers, which would be, okay, starting from here, I'm sorry. One, okay, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Let me write it. One, zero, zero, one, one, one. Right. Then I keep on doing it. Zero, zero, zero. 1 0 0 0 1 is this correct i hope it is correct and it is your answer in base okay now we have an idea about a method the first method to convert a decimal number to binary number now let's take a look at some commonly occurring bases like the octal and hexadecimal for example where you have your okay the binary form we're familiar with great and uh, the octal form is like the, the, the you have eight uh, symbols here from zero to seven that's the idea and where you have from zero to f like 16 symbols here is called two to the power four grouping two to the power three grouping these are some special occurrences of uh, a popular uh, or commonly occurring basis in computer systems. We also have, of course, decimal number system, which is dominant in our daily lives. Here, since we cannot represent this uh, 16 symbols by only uh, some uh, d digits here, numbers here, we also refer to some additional symbols from the alphabet like a b c d f a b c d e f for the extra six symbols now it is again a good idea to remember them okay I, i'm against memorizing okay but if you use them uh, often enough you will eventually uh, memorize them or remember them so that uh, okay let's call this a bit uh, friendly and let's say that let's remember them okay it's a good idea to remember them so when we're trying to convert between the bases we just convert the integer part and the fraction part separately and join the two results with a radix Point with the radix point so for converting the integer part we repeatedly divide the number by the new radix this is the second method that uh, we will see from decimal to binary conversion and to convert the fractional part we repeatedly multiply that fractional part in order to uh, until we reach to 
zero. So what we're trying to do here is, this is our example here that we're trying to understand is, we're trying to convert this number uh, to base two, then join the results with the radix point. Now let's do this together. Let's have a fresh board. Okay, and what was our number? It was, uh, okay, um, 40, Six point this this seven five in base ten is what in base two? This is our question. So we first focus on the uh, integer part, right? And uh, how we do is is it's. Uh, just divide by the radix here, by 2. So we have 23, 0, 2. Oops, it's wrong, right? It's not possible. So it should be 11, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, Four, one, two, one, two, zero, and finally uh, you will have one here, right? Now, because you cannot divide it by two anymore, so you stop here. That's the idea. Okay, it's uh, now here. You write them in this order, okay? And your integer part will look like this. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay? This is why we stop doing this. Because if we continue, we will all have zero. here, which would not have any meaning at all. So we stopped here. This is your integer part. And how about your fraction part? For the fraction part, you will do the reverse of this by multiplying all the time. Now, your fraction part is this one, right? 6, 8, 75. Now, just multiply it, or just, uh, just show you this. Just multiply it by the base, too, and you will have 1.5. 3750. Uh, okay, now since you have a one here, you will put here one and subtract one from here, and you will have the fraction part again times two, and you will have 0.75. And what about the integer part here? Since there is no, you will put here 0. Then you put this here times 2, and it will be your 1.5, right? And you put this one here again, V1. Subtract 1 from here to get the fraction. Just focus on the fraction part. Have 1 here, and we'll have 1. And when you subtract one from here, you will have here zero and you're finished. You can put lots of zeros here, but it will not change anything. That's the idea. And your fraction part will look like this. Point. Now, the order is like this again. One, one, oops. One, zero, one, one. This is your fraction part. Now combine it with this one, and the result will be what? 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, radix point, and the fraction part is 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1 would be your radix point, and this would be your answer in base 2. So this is what we did here.
Note that uh, I, we, we just discussed this. Uh, the, the, this uh, method has a drawback or let's say an, an extra information that should be told here. Uh, not, it is not every time that you can reach to zero here in this part. It's, it may not be possible. Here we were lucky that we ended up with zero here, but sometimes you never get that zero. It happens in decimal form as well. It's, it's not uh, something original to binary system. It happens in decimal form as well. Suppose that you're trying to divide this number by this one, like 22 to 7. You're familiar with, I think this is your P number. Like it goes to infinity, right? This one. So you need to cut from somewhere. You, you need to uh, truncate your number. Eventually, you limit the number of digits on the right-hand side on the fraction part. So that's what we do here for binaries as well. If, for example, this one keeps repeating here, this one, but be careful, like uh, after this, like zero, one, zero, this one becomes repeating here, and there should be also another one here, I guess, then repeating here. So you can limit by this, or maybe you can write it like this, like 0 0.101 zero zero one is repeating like this maybe you can represent or you maybe you can directly my limit is for example three digits so i write this like this okay my limit is this one i uh, there should be some assumptions here but that's the idea with the repeating uh, fraction ports in order to check the conversion back what was our number uh, it, okay, this was our number, right? So what, what you do here is you just uh, one time and uh, uh, you don't need to do this, but uh, if you want to do this one is this one, this one is this one, this one is this one. Oops, I made a mistake. Anyway, you can do it carefully on your own. Uh, this one, this one, this one, this is this one, this is this one, and finally the zero is this one. So you add them up and you will eventually get this number. And for the other ones, okay, this one is this one, and this one is this one. No, it's not here. This one is put here. This one is here. This one is here. This is how we do it. And this one has been skipped here. Uh, this one has been skipped here, which is zero times two to the power minus two. Okay, like uh, because it would give you zero at all. So they didn't put it here. Uh, they work because this works because uh, we're always uh, doing this in uh, let's say repeat with the remainders okay the, like you have the uh, I mean when you keep on dividing the numbers with the base you end up with the let's say integer part here or the and the remainder part will be put here as uh, let's say um, we did here is uh, working of course because you do this like a, like a, like a stairs like a, uh, since you're doing this and working with the uh, numbers here it's helping you to reach a reach the result uh, easily let's say uh, easier uh, method for uh, you can use method 1 and method 2, both are uh, possible here to get to conclusion. This one, you can convert the integer part with method 1 or method 2 and it will directly give you the same result. And when you're trying to convert to octal, to binary octal to hexadecimal binary to octal and the convergence between them is rather easy because you make grouping bit grouping so 
when you're working with octal form group bits by three when you're working with hexadecimal form group bits by four and when you're okay in binary form you you you, you will just work with single bit of course and of, if you work with tuples like uh, base four then you will group bits by two and that's surprisingly now let's try to convert this octal number to binary than to hexadecimal so it's rather easy let's take a look at this so since this is octal it means that it is it can be defined by bits of uh, three groups so here you write here one zero one is your five and zero one one is your three and your one one zero is your six and this is your radix point right and this one will be zero zero one this one will be one 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 this one will be one 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 then this is your radix point right okay now you have your conversion from octal to binary is finished it's rather easy you don't do any divisions or something like this it's pretty easy just group the bits together that's it so how, how can this be in hexadecimal form be careful just group by four now starting from the radix point but be careful i start grouping carefully like this see uh, start grouping carefully like this you see how beautiful it is and what is this it is one one zero one it is a good idea to memorize okay one one zero one is what one one zero one is uh, your 13 right which is your d see it's right here right 101 is your 13 which, which uh, corresponds to your d okay you put it right here and your 1001 is 9 and this one is 3 you see 0011 is your 3 and this one is 1111 is your f and what else now be careful now you zero fill the remaining ports now i have four digits now i have four digits here you see and this one will be your one and this one will be your eight all right and your final number will be one nine d radix point three f eight in base 16. that's how it works You can also use arithmetic in other bases if you're careful enough. Like, uh, I mean, um, but I I really don't suggest this uh, doing this at uh, home. I mean, uh, 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 because uh, like, let me show you here. It's possible, yes, but uh, don't do it. I don't suggest you do it. That's how it what it tells us like you're trying to suppose that you're trying to divide this number by this one okay what we do here in uh, let's say uh, decimal division is like this okay i'm trying to divide this number by this one is it possible no is it possible for this one to fit here no for this one no for this one yes okay i put this here one zero one zero and i'm uh, uh, i subtract it so i put it here one that's the idea then what is my result here zero 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 one one zero right so then i try to of course this part is not required so for again for uh this one i mean do i have this one in it no 
like this one and then do I have for this one in it no so finally this would be your uh, divide the I forgot the name like uh, this would be your result and this would be your now let's take a look at binary numbers and binary coding which gives us a flexibility for representation so you can code the your information as numeric values so it must be represented in the range of data needed and it is a very de desirable if you want to do some arithmetic operations within uh, with those data and uh, they should be tightly related to binary numbers of course but you can also represent the uh, or code the numbers in in a non-numeric form so it gives you greater flexibility since you, you you're not supposed to do arithmetic operations with them like just imagine you're coding some colors here which is because they are not tied to binary numbers at all that's the idea so given n binary digits they're called bits a binary code is a mapping from a set of represented elements to a set, subset of the 2 to the power n of binary numbers. So if you have, for example, three bits uh, for or three digits for uh, storage, you can store up to 2 to the power 3. It means eight symbols is possible to store here. But here you see the colors of the rainbow, seven colors. And this code is not used, but the other ones are all assigned a number, a, a unique number here. This is what we call coding, non-numeric way. How many number of bits is required is uh, calculated by this function. That's the idea. Suppose that I'm trying to uh, represent my decimal digits. Uh, with the binary numbers how many digits uh, uh, how many bits are required to represent the decimal digits it means that from 0 to 9 those are my decimal digits right so I will have 10 symbols here to generate for 10 symbols how many bits do I need that's the question that I need to answer here for 10 bits how many digits do I need so here I put here this formula is the, the, the and so I need to have 2 to the power n okay this is my number of uh, bits here required it should be like uh, which is your m here like you're trying to represent 10 digits here right so this one should be equal to this one so what you have here is that when you make the logarithmic operation here this will come up as n equals logarithm and you can write this one as well log 10 plus log 2 10 plus log 2 and this would be 1 right 1 over log 2 is okay you need to use some calculator here use a calculator here and the result will be 3.3 bits are required here like something like this okay is it possible to have 3.3 bits no so you need to have at least four bits for this if you have three bits you will come up short representing those all of the those 10 symbols so you need to have something extra this is why it is called the ceiling function here so you 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 choose the uh, upper one which is the integer greater than or equal to x it would be four you need four digits to represent the decimal uh, you need four bits to represent the decimal digits here and that's the idea and you can either for example you can represent four elements with two digits like this this is a more let's say i mean efficient scenario but if you're rich enough or if you're going for luxury or another type of representation you can use one hot coding as well it's possible there's no limit here you could you can represent uh, four uh, symbols or uh, four elements with four digits as well this is called one hot coding you see how one shifts here shifts its position here it's also as a special name which is called one hot coding uh, we can see that there are over 
8,000 ways that you can choose 10 elements, for example, for decimal numbers or anyway, for this, from the 16 possible uh, binary numbers here, which is uh, generated from the occurrence of four bits. Uh, okay, these are some very popular ones. You see, I mean, uh, like uh, you have 16 uh, binary numbers and you're trying to have select 10 different like you have 16 people and you're trying to form teams of uh, 10 from uh, 10 people teams from those 16 people and you will end up with this much of possibilities right the most straightforward one is okay this one right because it's the, the, the arithmetic form or the uh, mathematical form or the binary form uh, no, 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 the standard form that uh, you can also use for calculations as well. You see your nine is, one. but in fact, you can have 16 different alternatives for each of the values. That's the idea. So, and these are some popular ones XS3 and uh, 84 minus 2 minus 1 and gray coding examples. We will take a look at this briefly in a few moments. Here, the uh, BCD code is the uh, most popular one. The, the, this is the simplest and uh, because uh, it can use for arithmetic as well. But you should be careful that there are some invalid code words here, right? Like uh, for this one. Okay, what about, for example, 1010? Okay, what about 1011? Okay, how many of these do we have here up to 111? Since we have 10 symbols here, our capacity is 16 we have six unused okay six invalid code words here in our system and what are the interesting property for the other coding types like like excess three and the other one the other one the idea is they are like the ninth complement direct ninth complement of uh, these numbers like take, just take a look at this like three plus six will give you nine right so it's the ones complement of this number okay. the relation between them like seven plus two would give you nine as well and these are these special two are okay ones complement of each other the same thing goes for this one as well you see like uh, you're trying to three plus six for example three plus six you see they're directly ones complement of each other they're uh, most probably used in different application domains that's why they invented this code now do not mix up conversion with a decimal number a conversion of a decimal number to a binary number with coding so what we call what we did before was this is called conversion but what we convert here it is this is called coding like uh, you represent this digit as this one and you represent this digit as to be displayed on a monitor or screen or something it is something different this is called coding and this is called conversion so you need to have a trick for doing bcd arithmetic here yes it is possible to do binary arithmetic on it but you should be careful about the invalid code words so that's why you need to have a decimal adjust to acquire this difference between the digits. For example, 8 plus 5 is 13. But if it is more than, I mean, you cannot put a single, uh, like 13 in a single digit in decimal system, right? It's not possible. So it should be separated. How can you do this? You just skip those uh, invalid code words just by adding three and writing them as two different digits that's it so you make the calculation and when you end up with uh, something larger than nine you add six as well and this one will be your uh, least significant digit and this would be your next significant digit that's it so how we do this let's uh, solve this example and try to understand now let's uh, do this carefully okay zero one carry is generated okay zero one carry is generated here okay. one one carry is generated here and one 
Now I consider, do I need a decimal adjust here? What is this 12? So I need a decimal adjust here. Okay, this is your decimal adjust. Zero, one, zero, one plus one is zero. And you have a one carry, one carry out here. One plus one is zero. And you send the carry to your neighbor here. That's the idea, you see? So now I continue doing this. One plus one is zero. Put a carry here. One. No output carry. Zero. And uh, zero, one. Now I have one zero one zero. Do I need a decimal adjust here? Because it's 10, I cannot put 10 in a sin single decimal digit, right? So I need a decimal adjust here again. Zero, zero. I put a one here, zero. Put a one here and zero. And I send the one to my neighbor. Okay, one plus one is zero. Put a one here, one, zero, zero, one. Okay, because there's a number. Okay, is this number larger than, okay, is this number larger than, uh, what was it? One, zero, one, zero, zero, one, larger than, uh, uh, larger than nine of course yes i mean by default it is uh, uh 16 plus 2 18 or something yes 18 or something yes 18 it's 18 so it also requires a decimal adjust zero zero one zero one one Okay, this is your number, but this one will go to your neighbor and you will have your zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Now, does this require a decimal adjust? No, because it is, uh, this one is just four, so no problem. I uh, now write them. This is your four, this one, and this is your eight, this one, and this is your zero, this one, and this is your two. So the result is four, eight, zero, two. So let's check this. Uh, you do for yourself in the exam as well, in for this one, but of course computer don't, doesn't need to do this, but uh, let's do it, uh, like uh, 10 and Okay, it would be uh, 9 plus uh, is 0, and this one would be uh, 10 plus 8. No, oh, I'm subtracting, I'm sorry. What am I doing? 2, 10. 18, 14. Okay, correct. So, uh, in that sense, uh, you can also check your results as well uh, in exam, but really no need. I mean, if you do this, uh, let's say, algorithm carefully, no need to recheck it again. Uh, the alphanumeric codes are uh, represented as uh, ASCII characters, which are called, which are the abbreviation for American Standard Code for Information Ex Interchange. And this code is a popular code uh, representing uh, some printing characters and uh, 34 uh, non-printing characters as well, including backspace, carriage, return as well. So the thing is, uh, it uses uh, seven bits to represent. Uh, if you have seven bits, just remember how many, uh, let's say, if you have seven bits, you can, it means that you can represent up to 128 symbols, right? That's what we have here. And you can use this table for anything you like. For example, if you want to represent 
the for example capital a here what is its code see this is the most significant part and this is the least significant part and it is look at this one zero zero and the other one is what a for a zero 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 one so if you put a zero here as well it would be your what four t1 hex is your a so it means that your a is 41 hex right and what about for example three here in the what the three that you see on the screen that's what that's what we mean so the three that you see on the screen is this one which is your zero zero one one three and what about this one it is zero zero one one again three again hex so this is okay or three is your 32 hex that you see on the screen that's the idea so uh, th these are the uh, properties of ascii coding like uh, the decimal values are ranging from here to here and uppercase letters from here to here and lowercase letters from here to here and the lit is uh, reserved for all bit set you see here uh, this one is for all bit set c one one all ones so since uh, it was uh, it's coming from the early ages of computers where punching all the holes in a row was considered as erasing as the mistake erasing the mistake in these computers the early computers that's why it's the same it's still the same so that's it and let's take a look at the parity bit or error detection codes now we, we give some we put some extra information in our uh, uh, data so that uh, we can use it for error correction later uh, a simple form of redundancy is adding a parity bit uh, like you append this to the end of the code word end of the information so it's pretty simple you just count the number of ones in that data signal and a code word has even parity if the number of ones in that code is code word is even that's it and a code word has odd parity if the number of ones in that code word is odd that's it pretty straightforward so if you're sending an even parity message here what should be the parity bit here let's write them as blue one so you count the number of ones and they should be even okay zero is also even so one zero one zero zero one see this will be your even parity signals and what about the odd parity signals now the number of ones in each code word should be one uh, you should be uh, odd so it's one zero zero one zero one one zero that's it so this would be uh, your odd parity message that you need to send to your let's say mate or communication channel that's it the gray code is again used uh, which has a special property that only a single bit changes between the neighbors just take a look at each bit uh, I mean, I'm sorry, each digit and its neighbors. You see, only a single bit changes. Let's suppose that, let's take a look at this window, for example, for four. See, only this bit or only this bit changes here. Only a single bit changes. So, when you design a system using gray coding, what kind of, uh, F, uh, what kind of benefit can it have? When we take a look at this, suppose that this is a, gun positioning system or a laser beam or something like this which is called an optical shaft encoder so if you represent this direction uh, with the zero 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 then the next one zero one and then this one like these are this is called the let's say binary code positioning right but if you do this in a gray coding positioning system it's only a single bit differs between the neighbors right that's it so it means that you will have a gray coded optical shaft encoder here and just imagine the thing is here 
just imagine that you sometimes get some noise in signals, some kind of errors in signals. Sometimes some bit can be transmitted uh, falsely as as like one, for example. Instead, it should be zero, for example. What happens? Okay, if we have if I have a single bit her error in this code. I can end up with, for example, easily, like suppose that my first digit changed here. It would be one, right? One, zero, zero, I read. I need to fire or I need to position my gun right here, right? Laser beam right here. But if I read it as a simple mistake in a single digit, I will just, my direction would be this one. But how about the single bit errors in gray coding system, for example? Suppose that this one, is accidentally read as 100. What happens? Instead of firing this direction, you will fire in this direction. Okay, not perfect, but relatively better than this mistake. Okay, so if you have such systems, let's say maybe like uh, fuzzy systems or something like this, they can be useful in the end. That's what it's uh, what the author tells us about the uh, usage areas of uh, gray coding systems, gray coded systems, that's it. So, uh, there is also Unicode, which extends uh, our ASCII code to uh, more than uh, 65,000 uh, symbols. And uh, you can wonder uh, where is our, for example, Turkish uh, characters like this one, or what about the Chinese letters or in, uh, Creole alphabet, for example. How can this be possible? Because it can, it is extended to Unicode, uh, which gives you the capability of coding numbers with 16 bits. So uh, it's uh, much more, uh, I mean, uh, rich in terms of representation here, rather than only eight bits for uh, seven bits for representation. Unicode covers a whole. 16-bit area which corresponds to this much of uh, symbols possible to be represented. So it's, it's it's much more wide use. Okay, thank you for listening.